So, in this video, we're going to talk about is actually carbon dioxide a polar or non-polar. So get used to uh, this 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 idea of how I go about uh, determining this. All right. So the first thing I always do is draw my Lewis structures. All right. So I look at my atoms. So I have CO2. So I have two oxygens. And I'm going to count my valence electrons because I'm going to draw the Lewis structures. All right. So we know that carbon has uh, four Lewis uh, four valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons, and we have two oxygens. So really, we have twelve valence electrons. So the total amount of electrons we have to place is actually uh, 6 plus 4, that would be 10 uh, plus 16. So we have 16 uh, total uh, electrons, uh, valence electrons that we have to place. So again, usually in Lewis structures, the central atom, uh, your central atom is going to be uh, the the first, uh, the, the, the atom furthest to the left in the molecular formula. Uh, so in this case, we have carbon, and we actually have two oxygens uh, surrounding the carbon. All right, so I usually start with my single bonds and then I move up to double or triple if needed. So I could form a single bond between this carbon and I could also form a single bond on the opposite side. So that's why we've placed four electrons out of the total 16 that we have to place. And so we know that carbon and oxygen must satisfy the octet rules. Uh, these are two atoms that you should know by now satisfy, uh, almost always satisfy the octet rule. Also right, in this case, because I have uh, two, uh, uh, four total electrons around the, 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 the carbon, it is not satisfied. All right, so the octet rule is not satisfied around carbon. So I could actually place another single bond here and I could actually place another single bond here. Right now, just some of you may be wondering, okay, okay, well, how did you just get to this, the double bonds in, in, in just like that? Because you would see that if you actually place lone pairs of electrons around the carbon, you'll actually see that Lewis structure will not pan out to be what it should be. So in other words, you may get less than a 16 uh, counts of valence electrons or even more than 16 counts of valence electrons, which is not correct. So in this case, our carbon satisfied the octet rule. We have uh, two, four, six, eight. Uh, eight total electrons around the carbon, so the carbon is satisfied. All right, so now notice that we've used eight electrons total out of the 16 that we have to place, so we still have eight more electrons to place. So we know that if carbon's octet is satisfied, now we have to satisfy the oxygen's octet. So if you're looking at the oxygen on the right, it has two, four, only four uh, valence electrons total around the oxygen on the right, and the same thing for the oxygen on the left. Right. So in this case, I'm going to put the only the only other option I have. I cannot put a triple bond on the carbon because it's it's octet is already satisfied. So the only other option I have is to put electrons on the oxygen in the form of lone pairs. And so I could put two pairs of lone pairs. In that case, it will make uh, the total number of electrons around the oxygen satisfied. So two, four, six, eight. So the oxygen octet is satisfied and the carbon's octet is satisfied. The oxygen on the left, I could actually do the same thing as well. Right? So let's count how many total electrons we've placed thus far. On the left, we have 2, 4, 6, 8. On the right, 2, 4, 6, 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. And so we know this is a plausible Lewis structure for carbon, monoxide, uh, carbon dioxide, CO2. Going back to our dipole moments, again, we draw the dipole arrows uh, with the plus sign towards the electron, uh, towards the atom that's losing electrons and the arrow going towards the actual, the, the, the atom that's gaining electrons. So we know that oxygen is more electronegative than uh, carbon. And so therefore carbon will become a net positive and the oxygen will tend to hog the electron simply because it's more electronegative. The same thing is, 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 is also occurs on the right side, right? Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, so think about it as oxygen hogging the electrons, and that as a result uh, create a net positive charge on the carbon and a net negative charge on the oxygens. Now, the reason why carbon monoxide in this case is actually non-polar and is not polar, right? Carbon monoxide in this case is non-polar is because you look at the dipole arrows. Remember I said in the previous video that if your dipole arrows with the plus signs line up exactly 180 degrees to each other, that means that you have a net zero dipole moment, right? So the dipole moment is zero. Remember, in order for you to have a polar 
molecule, there must be a net dipole moment. In other words, the net dipole moment cannot be zero, right? So that's the idea. And so this is the reason why carbon monoxide, I'm sorry, carbon dioxide is not polar. It is non-polar because the dipoles cancel out. So there's net zero, the net dipole moment, the net dipole moment for carbon dioxide is a zero and this is why carbon uh, dioxide is non-polar.